So it was vacation time, time for our annual 4th of July-ish bike packing, bike touring trip. I loaded up my bike the way it was going to be loaded and rode over to Aaron's house. I was getting there the night before we were leaving so he could have everything packed up and ready to go. Me, Ben, and Aaron got on the road in the morning, and as you can see, the weather was not very great. We did have a plan for the day, but we weren't sure how it was going to go with this kind of weather. We ended up driving to a brewery to get some lunch and a beer. That's where we met Brad, Ames, and Mikey. We ate, had a drink, talked about the day. The rain kind of was ending, so we decided we'd go check into the Airbnb, get ourselves settled in. It was getting later in the day, but we still decided to do our plan, which was a route up to Ontario Beach Park. So Rochester actually sits about 10 miles inland from the Great Lake, but the Genesee River runs up that way, so we saw there was bike paths on both sides of the river, so we rode through the city and decided to go do that anyways. Uh, there was still a slight chance of rain, but it didn't look like there was gonna be a washout or any more thunderstorms. I've been to Rochester a couple times now. My brother lived there for a number of years, so I visited him, and I do recognize some of the neighborhoods and have a slight familiarity with downtown. And then me, Ben, and Aaron on her birthday one year actually rode from Buffalo to Rochester on the Erie Canal, spent the night, and then rode back the next day. So I've been here a couple times, really like the city. There's a lot of cool stuff around, and so I was excited to explore a completely different area heading up this way. We had no trouble heading through these neighborhoods into the first part of bike path, but Brad, who was meeting us a little later as they were checking into their place and he was a little behind, has some interesting stories, so maybe we'll get into that on the live streams. This first trail is the El Camino Trail, and it just kind of cuts through the neighborhoods. We were on it for a little while to start heading north, and you know, you can see it's just this kind of gravel path here and lots of puddles still from the weather we were having. We actually did get a little bit of rain out here, but not even anything to soak us through or, you know, much like that. I actually didn't realize that we weren't going farther. I was not paying attention and Ben and Aaron made the turn and I didn't. <laughs> we needed to go and cross the river to the Genesee River Trail, which is what we would be taking up into the lake. You could see here and the rest of the ride that the Genesee River is in this deep, really pretty valley. So it was a very, very cool ride altogether. We paused here in this park to check on Brad and his location and make sure he was going to be able to get to the trail that we were at since he was leaving from a different place. But then as soon as we got going, the trail got very, very interesting. I mean, this is more gravel bike riding than I would say bike path riding. You know, it's not even just your typical, you know, crushed stone trail. It's uh, it, there's hills. We are getting some speed on this stuff. You can see it does become paved in certain spots, but again, like, yeah, really uh, getting some good speed and curves and stuff. So not just a pan flat rail trail by any means. And also these really cool bridges as you get out of Rochester. After the bridge up here on the left, I believe this is the remaining Kodak factory that still makes film. They make motion picture film, and then they also make film stocks for film photography. Uh, most people think that film is completely dead, but if you follow this channel or your fellow photography, you realize that it's actually had this huge upswing lately, and a lot of younger people are really getting into shooting film, and Kodak has actually brought back film stocks. There's definitely a lot of closed and torn down Kodak factories, but I believe that's the remaining one. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I made the joke at the brewery that, well, if it's just going to rain all day, I guess we could spend the whole day at the Eastman House and Museum. I've been there before. I definitely want to go back. It was a long time ago, maybe 2014, but it's a huge collection of cameras and prints, and then they preserve movies and all kinds of stuff. So if you're a photography nerd and you're ever in the area, the Eastman House and Museum is definitely worth going to. We did go to a coffee shop right over there and did walk up to it, but on this trip we weren't going to be going inside as uh, that's kind of just my thing. This part of the trail was really, really cool. This is Turning Point Park. It was once a heavy industrial area. I did a little bit of research I could. Boats would turn around here. There were flour mills and so... Uh, yeah, I guess it's part of the Erie Canal system in a way, so boats would either go upstream or out to the lake or down to the canal and just seems really interested. But now it's just a beautiful park with this awesome boardwalk. And again, when we were doing a um, planning for this, we were, our big plan was for the next bike tour. That was going to be five days. We were starting in the morning. So we did make this route but I don't think we looked at it in super um, fine detail. So it was pretty surprising to see stuff that, that was this cool. 
this area is we're getting into the marina and the port of Rochester oh, okay. and stuff like that. And as mentioned, we did want to go out. I wanted to go out to this pier and get the views. Uh, the original plan, of course, was to go to the beach and go for a swim. That would have been if we were getting on the road on a nice uh, sunny day earlier in the day. But I'm still glad we did this ride for sure. This is definitely worth looking up and doing if you're in the area. And you could also continue on the trail south and that would take you through High Falls and stuff downtown. We actually went back a different way and circled around and did come through that area as you'll see. So it's kind of out at the end of the pier. Of course we stopped, you know, took our photos and just hung out for a little bit. It's also where we met up with Brad, as you could see. He caught us and we waited for him out there. The original plan also would have included, there's like little restaurants and shops, as you could see. We would have gotten dinner out here, but as it was getting late, we decided instead to head back into town proper and we'd get our dinner there and kind of head home to the Airbnb and get everything set for the trip the next morning. So we did see when Aaron was planning the route using Strava and Strava heat maps that there was a trail on the other side of the river that showed up as cycling. And so we crossed back over the river so we could turn our ride into a loop with some different scenery instead of just go back the same way we came. Uh, it was a little surprising when we started again, because as I mentioned, we didn't go super zoomed in on the fine details that it was a dirt trail at first. And it felt a lot like the OCA, if you've ever, ever ridden the old Crone Aqueduct Trail outside of yeah. New York, or if you've seen my video about it. But yeah, it was this like kind of dirt uh, neighborhood cut and was really interesting. There were other bike tracks and I've looked it up since. This is called the Rochester Running Trail and it does say that bikes are allowed on this. So it doesn't really feel like they should be, but there was no, no bike signs and what I've seen online, they are allowed. And uh, So yeah, we, we rode this for a while, but then it kind of split off into a number of trails. At some point, I believe we're on the Olmstead trails. And again, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what's allowed to be written and what's not allowed to be written but it was a lot of fun it was not again not what we expected off to the right is the river and a lot of times it's these really cool views you could stop and see down into the valley of the river but this was a uh, mountain bike like you know more mountain bike like than gravel riding there's roots and rocks we were actually joking that we were back in the northeast doing uh, new england style mountain biking on this definitely uh made it for slower going but a really fun and interesting ride so you know yeah, just going out and exploring new things and finding the stuff is pretty cool. I, if you do um, follow this route, definitely I would do a little bit of research. You could see there's, like I said, there's just whys and stuff. You're not going to get lost out here, but whether which trail you should be on might be something you'd want to look up if you're trying to be a good citizen. Uh, we were there, again, after the rain, and there weren't a lot of people out, so it's not like there were hikers everywhere. I don't know how it would be on a typical, beautiful weekend day if you would be... Uh, kind of feeling like you shouldn't be there but i do think that as we got close to the zoo there did become a part where we weren't supposed to ride anymore and that's what it felt like so we did jump out onto the road at that point which was fine and we just figured let's ride the parallel road back through here was a little different as we were just like kind of way out there Looking at the map now, it does also look like you could connect if you were continuing south to the El Camino Trail, which is that little section we were taking through the neighborhoods on the way out. But there would have been another section that we actually actually did not hit as we were going to head back towards downtown. So again, if you come out this way, uh, look at the maps a little bit and you might want to make that connection instead. Brad had yet to be downtown Rochester or to see the High Falls, which are beautiful. So we decided to head back through town and to the High Falls. And then from there, we can make our dinner plans and see what Ames and Mikey were up to and all that kind of thing. Our route in total ended up being about 24 miles with a little over 600 feet in elevation. Some of the elevation is what you saw on the more normal bike paths, just kind of that up and down, so not super steep gradients. But then there was the slower going dirt stuff that we were just riding over. Anyways, we got back in town. This is the Genesee uh, Brewery. We did not go on this trip, but it's a really cool spot. They have a rooftop patio. It overlooks the High Falls that you could see right here. This is a park right on the edge of the High Falls with an overlook. So this is where we stopped and planned what we wanted to do for dinner. We did find a open brewery a couple miles away that was farther down the river. So that's where we decided to head. Uh, Ames and Mikey had already had dinner, but they were still gonna end up meeting us over there for a drink and to talk about the plans for the morning. 
It ended up being a pretty sunset ride along the river. So even though the day didn't go entirely as planned, we still got to do our route and it was still really enjoyable. Don't really know what would have happened if it if we had ended up taking off earlier, but this is us pulling up to the brewery, Swiftwater Brewing. Uh, the food and the beer were really good here. I think it's a pretty new brewery, but yeah, was really happy with it. After we had our drinks and dinner, it was a nighttime ride back to the Airbnb, getting stuff set up as we'd be taking off in the morning. The first day of the tour was gonna be over 100 miles, but pretty flat as it'd be along the Erie Canal Trail past Syracuse into the campground that we were going to be heading. So here we are in the morning starting to get the bike stuff together. Uh, pretty exciting, a little bit nervous as we had kind of planned this route entirely ourselves. So get subscribed up if you want to see those videos. They'll be out soon. Peace.